planners know best. Listen to your planner, I'm telling you. They know best, they have the experience. So she said, what about your bouquet? And I was like, ah, oh, well, I don't, like I said, I was a very nonchalant bride. I was like, um, I don't know, I don't know. So then my cousin had said, I mentioned it to my cousin because she does floral stuff. And she said, oh, she won't be able to do it, but she can get one made for me. And that will be her gift to me. So when I told my planner, she said, let's, let's have a backup plan because are you absolutely sure she'll be able to? And I was like, oh no, it's fine. She said, I mean, why doubt her? Around 11 p.m. the day before my wedding, my cousin sends me a message and says she's so sorry and that the people didn't come through with a bouquet. <laughs> I read the message. I was sick, so I was actually sick th during my wedding. I had a chest infection, um, but I was braving through it. So I read that message. I laughed because it was like, oh boy, she told me, you know. So I sent her a message. I was like, I'm so sorry to do this, but I need an emergency bouquet. And she came through for me. I mean, she's, she's amazing. So in the morning, she showed up with the bouquet of flowers for me. My name is Petrina Edusei. I have been married for over three years. Um, I'm not sure where, I can't do the math right now. Um, and I'm a clinical health psychologist based in Ghana, so I'm very passionate about mental health. Um, so that's what I do for a living. His proposal was like, well, my church is doing marriage counseling and they encourage young couples to be in marriage counseling. You don't have to be ready to get married so soon. So why don't we just do it now so that at the time we decide we can say we've done it. And then we were in marriage counseling and it was kind of like, okay, this is leading to something. And yeah, that's how romantic it was. This is a very interesting one. So from the day he proposed or when he suggested marriage counseling, um, I think somewhere through the counseling period, we were just kind of like, okay, what are we waiting for? We might as well just get it done with. And I felt for some weird reason, I felt like, yeah, what are we waiting for? I wasn't eager, like, oh, I need to get married. But I was like, what are we waiting for? So his family came for knocking came to express their intentions and there they were talking about okay so possibly we're looking at maybe a few months from now my dad was like why my father was, couldn't wait <laughs> to get rid of me that's a joke um, but he was like no there's no need to plan anything extravagant or we can do it small just us family so when can we do my dad picks up his phone looks on his calendar how is two Saturdays from now so literally at the knocking, I was just there and I was like, what the heck is going on? They decided that the traditional was going to be two weeks from then. But the only reason why that made sense was we had agreed that it was going to be just his very close family and mine. We weren't going to do any, you know, large ceremony. So, um, yeah, so two weeks from knocking, we had our traditional. That ended up becoming a ceremony, by the way. Um, my dad was like, no, you know. We are Africans, we have to invite this, our family members and things like that. So it ended up becoming bigger than we envisioned. And then between the, 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 the traditional ceremony and the wedding, it was about the three, three weeks, almost one month. Now this happened because my dad's work, he was required to go and um, meet with his boss where he was going to be stationed, which was another country. So he asked us to shift our date forward so we could have the ceremony before he left. But then the date he asked for didn't work with our pastor. And then, so he had to go and then come back. And the date that made sense was um, the, the 18th of August. The funny thing about it is we didn't get confirmation of that day until a week before. So <laughs> it, was, it was such a mess. When I was telling my friends about it, some of them were like, oh, you didn't want us to come, so you didn't give us ample notice. I got questions like, are you sure you're not pregnant? The way this thing is coming out of nowhere, you know. Um, I wasn't at the time, but I mean, it's neither here nor there. 
funny enough i called the pastor to confirm the date and ask him the time and then he goes ah 18th i had you here on tuesday oh 18th is friday i have a program on friday and i'm like dude we've just printed out the invitations that are going out a week before so he said let me call you back and then he calls back and he says okay fine we can do the 18th so yeah i called people and i was like okay i'm getting married next week can you come and <laughs> so that was my weird there's a lot more in there but that was a roller coaster that took place all my vendors were so amazing i'm so grateful for all of them um Honestly speaking, I think I, I had the best experience with my vendors. So when I was choosing husbands, I chose very well, in fact. <laughs> okay, no, it just so happens that um, my, my partner is in the industry. He's a vendor himself, so he knew most of the vendors. He was friends with most of them. Um, our planner, he had been friends with our planner for years. Um, I really liked her. I love her, actually. She's like family. And so naturally, she was the one who planned um, the event. And um, yeah, she, they handle things. Honestly speaking, I think there are very few brides like me. I didn't worry about anything. I wasn't fussy about anything. They asked me what I wanted. I said white and gold. What do you want the centerpiece? I was like, simple. She's like, give me more detail. I'm like, that's simple. Just go, just keep it very simple. I, my dress, um, yeah. I actually didn't think about the fact that I, I was supposed to have a wedding dress. And then my sister and I was like, so what are you wearing? I'm like, um, I don't have anything. <laughs> so she takes me to a bridal shop and then we go and look around and all the dresses were so extravagant. I was about to leave when the owner of the store um, said just try this one on it was a beaded dress but when i wore it it was very simple the, the cut was very simple and i fell in love with it it was just me it was nice but simple so that's how i ended up with, with my wedding dress um, so with vendors truly it was my husband who did all the work My preference originally was for us to go to Registrar General and go and sign <laughs> and then have like maybe a small lunch. Um, Stephen's family, they had been waiting for him for quite some time and I'm the firstborn so our families were not having it. So then our agreement was that, our original plan was in the morning we would do, this was before everything, we would do like the small traditional, just his family, my family. Then when we're done with that, he and I will sit in his car together, drive to my pastor's office, go with our witnesses, do the very quick ceremony, sign there, come back home, have lunch for about 50 people. And then maybe later on down the line, especially when friends from outside could come, maybe we could have a reception or something. But that was our original plan. Considering our budget, considering what we wanted, we wanted it nice and simple and small. I mean, from what I've said before, you know, that didn't happen. Um, so we did the traditional at my house, naturally, um, my parents' house. Then we did a church signing, but our family members, aunties and uncles also insisted. So they had to arrange some small chairs, you know, in the pastor's office. And then we signed there. I never, ever saw myself walking down an aisle with a veil. It's something I never wanted, never desired. If I could go back, I wouldn't do that. So um, even the church wedding, I think, was bigger than how I had envisioned in my mind because there were other family members besides our witnesses there. Um, so we signed, we did a church signing um, in the pastor's office and then the reception was a garden reception because I like nature. Yeah. My funniest experience was that uh, so the church was at Spintex Road, near Community 18. Um, I live not too, or my parents' home is not too far from there. Stephen's older sister lives like right across the street. Like you can literally almost throw a stone into land on a compound. I'm exaggerating a little, but 
less than five minutes away. So I get to the church um, and then they take me the back way to the pastor's office and then they put me in the waiting area. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15. So I asked the pastor's assistant, what's, what's going on? He goes, oh, don't worry, just relax. Everything is okay. And I'm like, ah, do I look like I'm not relaxed? I'm just asking what's going on. But now I'm starting to wonder. I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't panicking. I assumed that the pastor was delaying. Maybe he was in the middle of something. I kept waiting, I kept asking questions. I think I sat there for maybe close to an hour. I won't lie. And, and it was just, I was like, seriously, let's just get this thing over with. That, that's exactly how I was feeling. So we go in, I get called in, we go in, only to find out after the fact that um, my husband shows up at the, uh, my husband-to-be at the time showed up at the church, dressed, looking good, ready, jumps out of the car, passes the assistance, is like, okay, can I have the rings? And then he, he remembers that it's by his bedside at Kanda. Mind you, our wedding was on a Friday. If you know anything about the Spintex Road and traffic to Kanda is... So, so he went through his panic mode and then he asked his assistant to take an Okada. At that time, they hadn't banned Okadas. Um, so he hopped on one to Kanda. At some point, apparently, my partner called him so many times, he wasn't picking up his phone. He too started panicking, but finally he called back and said, okay, I have the rings, I'm on my way. And he brought it. So yeah, that was very funny when I was told. This one is not so funny. It's not scary either, but it's interesting because my planner, planners know best. Listen to your planner, I'm telling you. They know best, they have the experience. So she said, what about your bouquet? And I was like, ah, oh, well, I don't, like I said, I was a very nonchalant bride. I was like, um, I don't know, I don't know. So then my cousin had said, I mentioned it to my cousin because she does floral stuff and she said oh she won't be able to do it but she can get one made for me and that'll be her gift to me so when i told my planner she said let's let's have a backup plan because are you absolutely sure she'll be able to and i was like oh no it's fine she said i mean why doubt her around 11 p.m the day before my wedding my cousin sends me a message and says she's so sorry and other people didn't come through with a bouquet <laughs> I read the message I was sick so I was actually sick th during my wedding I had a chest infection um, but I was braving through it so I read that message I laughed because it was like oh boy she told me you know so I sent her a message I was like I'm so sorry to do this but I need an emergency okay and she came through for me I mean she's she's amazing so in the morning she showed up with the bouquet of flowers for me So one interesting thing about my ceremony is that there was no alcohol served. Yeah, there was no alcohol. Um, both my partner and I don't drink. Um, so for me, I was indifferent. I didn't mind if alcohol was served, but um, he suggested, he was like, well, if, if we don't drink it, why should we be the ones, why should we serve it? And we decided not to. I know, I know, I know for a fact that a number of my friends and other people were very disappointed uh, <laughs> that there was no alcohol. I'm sure some of you are looking at me like, how? How is it possible to have a ceremony? It is possible because we did it and we're still married. So that was the interesting thing about, about my ceremony. There was no alcohol, but I had fun. And um, my closest friends, we had fun, we danced, so yeah. If I could go back, I would not have a white, well, yes, I wouldn't have a white wedding, even though it was a church signing. I would do just the traditional marriage and then sign there. Um, I don't believe that it is, you know, we, in our society, there's this notion like, when are you doing the proper wedding and it's the white wedding? Um, not understanding that the white wedding is somebody's traditional you know, ceremony. So I don't believe that it's a must. I like being Ghanaian. I like African tradition, hence my South African necklace. Um, but I love the traditional marriage. I think it's, it embodies everything that needs to be done. 
a pastor can pray there, pray over the rings and marry you there. Um, if you want to do your white, that's, I mean, that's everybody's prerogative, but if I could do something differently, that's what I would do. I would have just the traditional and then sign there. Well, two, two valuable lessons. Let me, let me say two. The very first one is not to fret over the ceremony, right? Because at the end of the day, it's just a few hours in the day and it will pass. What is the goal of the ceremony? The goal of the ceremony is for you to, sh to marry the person you want to spend the rest of your life with and share that happiness with people. So sometimes we fuss about, oh, it has to be this color. This color is not matching exactly. People will talk, people will, you know, and we fret over all of these things and then the day comes and passes and it's like, ugh. fortunately I didn't fret and I look back and I'm so glad I didn't. Um, and I have heard from people also say that there, there was really no reason for them to fuss about these things because it comes and it goes, you know. So try not to fret about unnecessary things. The only thing you should be worried about is that the person you want to spend the rest of your life with shows up because I know weddings where that doesn't happen, trust me. Um, and the final thing is money. We had a small budget. We, we could cater for 50 people at the time the way we wanted to do things. Our families were insisting that, oh, well, your family, your uncle here, your auntie this, and we said, well, we don't have the funds for it. So if you're insisting, you should be able to contribute or help in some way, and they did. I remember my dad was like, you want how many people? 50 people. What kind of white people thinking is that? Eh? This, this type of mentality, you don't, don't bring it to this place. Oh, we are Africans and we'll celebrate as such. I remember that's exactly what he said. But remember that the amount of money that you spend at your ceremony, right? The amount of time it takes you to, to make that money and for you to spend it in a span of hours, it, it's something, most of the time it doesn't make sense. So one thing that I'll say is that if you have the means, by all means, splurge, do have, have your white doves, do whatever it is that you want to do, to do. But if realistically it doesn't make financial sense, especially because you're going to have a future, you have to live somewhere, you have to pay rent, you have to pay bills, think more about your future. Nowhere in the world do they have, maybe there's somewhere, but nowhere that I know of have I heard of wedding um, awards. Oh, and the best wedding goes to this person. The best decor goes to... It doesn't happen. Maybe it happens for the vendors, but you as the individual, you won't get a special award. You won't get a special grant to have the, the most lavish wedding ever. So keep that in mind. And then and, and tied to that is that the nature of your wedding is not tied to the, the longevity or the happiness or the satisfaction of your marriage. If that were the case, then we should all borrow money to have lavish weddings, right? But there's nothing that guarantees that once your ceremony goes a certain way, your marriage will be great. And most of the time, that's what people focus on. They focus on when they think about, I'm getting married, it's, I'm having a wedding ceremony. And then when they go back home and they're faced with each other in the marriage, it's like, great ceremony, dysfunctional relationship. So, um, Back to what I was saying, be mindful about what you spend um, for your ceremony. Don't go um, outside of your means, don't borrow money, um, don't, don't live outside of your means for your ceremony. So. Two things again, I'm a two things person. Um, <laughs> so the first one is that it's important for us to understand that two people coming together are two individuals from completely different backgrounds. Even siblings who grew up in the same home, right, are different in some ways. So now take you and your partner coming from different parents. You could even be from the same hometown, but your home setting is different. Now what's going to happen is when you come together, you have, you have been taught a normal way of doing certain things and your partner also has their way of doing things by virtue of how they grew up and their experiences. A lot of the times when people come together and they're knocking heads in, in, in their relationships or in their marriages, they think a lot of these things are deliberate on their partner's part. But it's important to remember that it's two people trying to figure out how to live together and create their new normal. When you think about it that way, 
um, it's less contentious. So the person leaving the cap off the, the toothpaste, that's their normal. Your normal is put it back on. How do we figure out how to create um, our new system, right? So if it's you have to remind the person most of the time, do that. If it's the, the I'm going to buy the one that you squeeze and it's a cap instead of screwing. So you find what works for you. Think about that. I remember in the beginning, I have this thing of not closing door cabinets and drawers. My partner was like, why do you leave these things open? And from my mouth, because I read something and justified it. People who like to leave these things open, they are very open people. Open people, you know. <laughs> I'm sure he was so irritated by it, but gradually I've become more conscious of it. And even now, sometimes when he leaves something open, I'll go and close it and I'll just laugh to myself. Because in my mind, I told myself that we are just trying to figure out how to live with each other. And the last thing, or the second thing, the last thing is that um, we focus on trying to change our partner. So it's, they are like this, they've done this wrong, I, I will help them do things the right way. I, from my personal experience, I've realized that if you work on yourself, you work on your mental health, you work on your happiness, you work on your satisfaction, there is no way it won't translate into your relationship. Because sometimes the things that we see in people that we don't like and we criticize are actually things about us we're not ready to face or deal with. And so if you think your partner is lazy or disorganized and it drives you nuts, more often than not, that's something that you yourself are dealing with on a certain level that you are not ready to face. So if you really want your marriage to improve, work on yourself work on being better, work on being in a better emotional and mental space, that almost always will translate into your marriage. So yeah, that's what I have.